All right, my dear students. Today we are going to practice income statement, and we have a examination past paper question uh, with the name of Surya. Surya is in the business as a sole trader. The following balances were extracted from her books on thirty first March two thousand sixteen. Now the year ends on thirty first March. Financial year of Surya ends on thirty first March. Then it must have been started after March comes. And April, okay. So the April fifteen would be start start of the year. Now we have some values given. One is revenue, also known as sales. Then we have purchases. We have return inward, also known as sales return. Now we have an inventory. Now as you can see, inventory does contain the date at start of the year. Therefore, it is an opening inventory. Another way to remember is that uh, in the list, the examiner always gives the opening inventory. In the list of balance or trial balance, we always have an opening inventory. And at the uh, in the additional information, as you can see, uh, there is always the closing inventory. Okay, in node one we have a closing inventory, and in the list we have an opening inventory. Then we have uh, capital. Capital is all always given uh, as an opening capital, and the closing capital is never given. Then we have drawings, leasehold premises. Then we have computers. Uh, these are non-current assets, leasehold premises. This means we have. Taken a premises on a twenty-five year lease, and it is also non-current asset because because we are using it for more than one year. Computers are also non-current asset, and office furniture are also NCA non-current asset. Then we have provision for depreciation. We need to underline it. Provision for depreciation uh, means the total depreciation till date for all of these three types of non-current asset. Then we have some other item: wages and salary. It is obviously an expense. Computer maintenance, it is also an expense. Commission receivable, okay. Uh, either the examiner writes commission receive or receivable. It means the same thing. It is an income for the business, other income. Then rent and rate uh, is an expense. Obviously, we have provision for doubtful debt, and we'll see later is the provision increase or decrease. We have a six percent bank loan, and bank loan is a liability. Now, is it a non-current liability or current liability? Now, as you can see, dear students, the year is ending on thirty-first March, uh, and we have to pay the loan uh, in June two thousand sixteen. Now, any loan that needs to be paid till thirty-first March twenty seventeen, okay, it would be a current liability. And in this case also, we have just need to pay the loan after three months after the end of the year. Then, therefore, uh, this loan is a current liability instead of non-current. And if the examiner doesn't write any date, we'll always assume that loan is a non-current liability unless the examiner says is a short-term loan, and then and uh, it will be uh, termed as a current liability. Uh, it's if it's a short-term loan, then we have bank interest paid. We'll see to it in the later part. Uh, heat and light is an expense. Advertising is also an expense. Journal expenses are there. Cash and bank. Uh, if it's a debit bank balance, it's a positive balance, and if the bank balance is in credit, then it's an overdraft. We have a trade payables and trade receivables as well. Additional information, bunch of information is given, and what is the requirement? We are we want to prepare the income statement for Surya. Now let us start how to make an income statement. My dear student, income statement is always made in two columns, and these two columns are not debit credit. Instead, are they are just for presentation purpose. So anything that needs to be plus minus would be entered in the first column, and the subtotals would be written in the second column. First of all, uh, let me uh, write the format. We have already discussed the format, and if you don't remember the format, you must go through the lesson for concepts for income statement. Uh, then the first of all we have sale. Then we have return inward, also known as sales return, or goods return by customers. Sometimes examiner write this way. Then we have a cost of sale. Cost of sale means uh, how much uh, the cost the goods cost uh, to the business. Okay, we will be starting with opening inventory. That is inventory at start of the year. Then we need to add purchases because this increases our inventory. Then we have a return outward. Okay, return inward. Uh, is deducted from sales and return outward is deducted from purchase. Return outward also known as purchase return. Then we have a carriage inwards. So there are two types of carriage we studied previously. One is carriage inward and another one is carriage outward. Inward relates to buying of goods and outward relates to selling of goods, delivering goods to customers. So inward is always uh, added in cost of sale and outward is always added as an expense. Then we have a closing inventory. 
then after directing and adding these items we have a cost of sale if we direct sale from cost of sale i am left with gross profit after gross profit there are two other adjustment one is other income then we have expenses we need to uh, leave at least three lines for other income there can be more than one other income then finally we have profit or loss for the year so let us start with the values first of all we have our sales uh, now before going through this uh, we need to uh, read these as well okay we need to read these as well. these adjustments are very important and if we do not adjust these items we are not going to get much marks in the examination and note one the inventory is always closing and in the list of balances uh, uh, the upside this list uh, this is always the opening inventory okay now we have commission receivable was outstanding outstanding means accrued okay so we are uh, will be saying how we'll be adjusting anything that is outstanding or prepaid advertising also have some uh, thing uh, as prepaid or accrued and we will be discussing it in the later part we just need to make sure that how uh, many adjustments are there and which adjustments relate to which items that are given above we have general expenses also we have accrued at the end of the year we have a computer uh, costing 8000 that have been recorded in computer maintenance account uh, in the error now as you can see computer uh, is a non current asset and it is a basically capital expenditure but we what we did we recorded it by mistake in the maintenance account because maintenance was an expense we uh, we uh, recorded a capital expenditure as a revenue expenditure now how can we correct this uh, we need to deduct the maintenance account that is maintenance account would be credited and the computer that is a non current asset account would be debited now the rates of depreciation are given in note number 6 and in note 7 we have irrecoverable mm -hmm. debt that is also known as bad debt and the provision for doubtful debt is 4% okay so these were basically adjustments uh, so we just need to keep in mind we need to keep an open mind while solving it first of all my dear students we have revenue revenue uh, is a sales we need to highlight these uh, it's better to highlight this just to make sure we have used all of the adjustments or not then we have a return inward as you can see return inward is al already given also known as sales return we need to deduct the return inward from the sales and this the final value would be written in the second column 283850 this is a net sales but uh, sometimes uh, normally examiner does not label this value as a net sales so i'm also not labeling it so then we have a cost of sale which will be started with the opening inventory now as you can see inventory in the list of balances all always opening inventory uh, which is for the first of the date then we have a purchase we do not have any adjustment in the purchase so we'll be writing the purchase amount 143,800. Then we have return outward. We do not have any return outward or carriage inward here. So we can uh, write a dash and if instead we haven't made the format earlier, so we can skip these two lines and we can just write closing inventory just after the purchase. Okay. So the closing inventory in the node one, we already have been given the closing inventory. This is the inventory that is left at the end of the year. We need to deduct this closing inventory okay uh, opening plus purchase minus closing it would become a cost of sale now the goods that we have sold for now the goods that surya have sold for 283 850 actually cost surya only 141 150 now the difference between the two values is the gross profit now uh, surya's friends are saying her that you are in very good position and you're earning such a great amount of profit but surya will uh, tell their friends her friends that this is not my final profit because I still need to uh, cover all of the expenses of the business okay so the expenses also need to be deducted and another thing that needs to be adjusted as other income now anything that has a receive in the end would be an other income rent receive or rent receivable commission receive or commission receivable now we can find a commission receivable here now, as you can see, the commission has been received 4,900. This means this amount we have already received it. And now, as you can see, there is an adjustment in note number two, and the 1,400 commission was still outstanding. Okay, we have provided services to someone, uh, and that commission has not yet been received by us. So this is basically an accrued income. Now, what happens uh, regarding accrued and prepaid? There is an adjustment that needs to be understand. 
uh, APPM. The, now the, there is a mnemonic that I use APPM accrued plus and prepaid minus. Okay, accrued plus prepaid minus. Now what happens at the end of the year? Accrued is always plus, and if there is a prepaid that needs to be deducted, prepaid minus accrued plus. Now if it's a accrued income. We need to did, uh, we need to add this accrued income. Okay, so no matter it's an income or it is an expense, accrued is always added at the end of the year and prepaid is always deducted at the end of the year. Okay, so the gross profit uh, in a gross profit there is only one income. If there are more than one incomes, we need to write it in the first column and we need to add up uh, and write it in the second column. So gross profit add other income. The total value is now this. And then we are going to move it to expenses. Okay, so after other income, there are expenses. Now we are starting with expenses from the list that is given by the examiner. First of all, as you can see, we have an expense named as wages and salary. Now we have paid wages and salary twenty six thousand five hundred. We just need to make sure that there are no adjustments in the notes relating to wages and salary. And I cannot find any adjustment relating to wages and salary, so therefore this should be recorded here. Then we have a computer maintenance value. Uh, the computer maintenance is obviously an expense, but there is an adjustment in the notes as you can see. We have paid for twelve thousand two hundred as computer maintenance, but the examiner have mentions that a computer costing has been recorded by error in maintenance account. So computer is an asset. And it is not an expense. So what we need to do, we need to deduct it from the expenses, and we need to add up in the computer asset account. Okay. So the total amount uh, from the total amount we need to deduct eight thousand, and this is basically the computer maintenance expense that is actually the expense. Then we have some other expenses. We need to scan all uh, this question in order to look for expenses. Then we have rent and rate. It is obviously an expense. And there isn't any adjustment relating to rent and rate. Okay, so we just need to write here bank loan interest. This is an uh, interesting adjustment. Uh, as you may be aware that whenever we take out a loan from the bank, it's a non-current liability or a current liability. In this question, it's a current liability because it needs to be paid uh, or in the next year. Okay, after year end, we need to pay it in the next year. Now, as you can see, the loan amount is forty thousand, and we need to apply six percent on the forty thousand. Now, let me do uh, the calculation for you guys. Uh, how much loan is it? Forty thousand. Forty thousand times six percent. So the total loan interest for the year is twenty four hundred. Now, how much loan interest has already been paid? As you can see, we have already paid interest worth fifteen hundred. Now, out of this twenty four hundred, that is the total amount that needs to be paid. We have already deducted. Uh, paid fifteen hundred. Now nine hundred of the loan interest has not yet been paid. Okay, so if something is not yet being paid, it is an accrued expense. Now what happens at the end of the year? We need to add the accrued. Okay, accrued needs to be added plus, and prepaid needs to be deducted. Okay, so we have paid nine hundred, and we still needs to pay. Uh, we have paid fifteen hundred, and still nine hundred needs to be paid, and the total amount is twenty four hundred. So we'll be writing this way. If we have just written twenty four hundred, we'll be getting one mark out of the two. Then we have some other expenses with the name of heat and light. Yes, as you can see, there is an expense of heat and light, and I cannot find any adjustment relating to this. So I'll be writing it this way. Then we have an advertising. Advertising is obviously an expense, and we have paid for advertising how much twelve thousand six hundred. But there is an important adjustment in this value advertising. Let us see. Advertising included a payment of fifty seven hundred. Uh, what does this mean? Uh, out of this twelve thousand six hundred, this twelve thousand six hundred value also includes this fifty seven hundred value. Okay, and uh, what was this fifty seven hundred for? This for uh, was for a series of advertisement being published in the six months to July. So therefore, we have paid for advertisement till July. Okay, six months till July. So, uh, if we have paid uh, six months till July, so how many months uh, it would be? Uh, I guess we are going to start it with February. Okay. So if there are six months and we start from January and this would end on June. Okay. And if it's ending on July, we are going to go backward six months. From July, we are going to backward six months. Okay. So it would be February, March, 
April, May, June, and July. Okay, there is six months from February till July. We are paid for advertising, but the year is being ended on March. Okay, year is being ended on March. So this means after March, all of the payments that we have made, these are prepaid. Okay, so we need to count it after March. After March becomes uh, April, May, June, and July. So this means out of these six months, four months are still prepaid. Okay. So we need to divide 5700 by six months. Why? So therefore we can get monthly value for advertising. So the monthly advertising is 950 and now we need to multiply it with four months. So therefore we have paid four months out of six months are basically prepaid. So this does not belongs to this year. So therefore it shouldn't be charged this year. Instead, the prepaid needs to be minus. Okay. Prepaid needs to be directed that out of this 12,600 advertising that we have paid, what we need to do, we need to deduct this 3,800. And now we are left with, so we have already done this. Uh, so this is basically the amount 8,800 that needs to be charged this year. Now, what happens to this? Uh, this 3,800 is basically a prepaid expense and this needs to be uh, recorded in the statement of financial position that we'll be making uh, uh, later, okay? In the later lessons so this is a current asset now after advertising there are the general expense let us see is there any adjustment in the general expense yes as you can see general expenses are accrued at the end of the year and uh, with the mnemonic with the help of the mnemonic we know that accrued is going to be added and prepaid is going to be deducted okay so why are we adding this we are adding this because this uh, is also the expense that has been incurred this year but it has not been paid so no matter whether the expenses have been paid or not, or we have paid for more than uh, the actual expense. So uh, applying the matching principle, this is basically the matching principle. This needs to be charged this year. Okay. Now let us do some uh, other expenses. Uh, we have depreciation. Now, uh, what does depreciation mean? We have already studied depreciation. This means that uh, whenever a non-current asset uh, is used, so that a uh, uh, non-current asset loses its value during the year and this reduction in the value of a non-current asset is known as depreciation, okay? So in note six, all of the adjustments relating to depreciation are given uh, in note six part one, appropriate amount on the leasehold premises. Now examiners that does not uh, specifically mentions the rate uh, of depreciation or the method of depreciation, examiner just says, you need to charge appropriate amount on leasehold. Now, as you can see, the leasehold premises, we have a cost of one lakh and this premises uh, we have uh, got in one lakh dollar and we can use it for 25 years. So if the year is given, this means it's a straight line. And what we need to do, we just need to uh, divide the original cost with the life. OK, so life is 25 years. So in a straight line method, if the rate is given, we are need to we need to multiply it with the percentage. And if instead the life is given, we just need to divide it with the life. OK, so we need to charge 4000 depreciation per year. It's an expense for use of this leasehold premises. Now we have a computer. Let us see what is the uh, depreciation method of, on computer. We need to charge 25 percent reducing also known as diminishing balance method. Now, my dear students, whenever we charge depreciation using reducing or diminishing balance method, uh, the rate is not being applied on cost. Instead, the rate is being applied on a net book value. Now, what is the net book value we studied earlier uh, in the depreciation topic? As you can see, the cost of the computer is 44,000. And these computers has already been depreciated previously by how much? By 16,600. Now, what we need to do, we need to deduct 16,600 uh, provision from the original cost and the value that we are left with is net book value. And now what we need to do, we need to apply 25% on this net book value in order to get the depreciation this year. Okay. Now the formula is cost minus provision multiplied by rate. There is uh, another adjustment that we forgot to put it. And this is, as you can see in note number five, as you can see, we have bought a new computer and by mistake, we have recorded this in a maintenance account. So what we need to do, we need to uh, remove it from the maintenance account and we need to add it in the computer account. Okay. So this 8,000 also needs to be added. Okay. 
and the provision need to be deducted of the previous years and now the remaining value that is net book value we need to apply 25 percent and we, the depreciation that we are going to get this year is double eight five zero okay lastly we have office furniture depreciation now what is the method for office furniture as you can see in notes in note six office furniture need to be uh, charged 10 percent straight line okay uh, if the examiner mentions straight line or if the examiner mentions 10 percent on cost this means the same thing okay so what we need to do we just need to apply 10 percent on the original cost of the furniture as you can see the original cost is 15,500 and we need to apply 10 percent on 15,500 in order to get this depreciation okay now let us see are there any expenses left in the question uh, yes, uh, there is a provision for doubtful debt. We need to calculate uh, either the provision has been increased or decreased. And there is another thing with the name of irrecoverable debt. As you can see, note number seven, trade receivables of 1900 are irrecoverable, also previously known as bad debt. So irrecoverable debt always needs to be charged as an expense. Then we have an increase or decrease in provision. We need to see whether the provision has increased or decreased. In this case, the provision is increasing. Uh, therefore, I am writing it in the expense. Now, how can we make sure it is increasing? Uh, let us see how we can calculate increase or decrease uh, in provision for doubtful debt. We have already studied these uh, topics previously. Now, as you can see, trade receivables is 27,900. This means our customers owe us how much amount? Customers owe us 27,900. Out of this 27,900, uh, 1,900 are basically irrecoverable okay so these are confirmed bad so what we need to do we need to deduct this uh, irrecoverable debt from the trade disabled figure now we are left with 26000 amount now the question here arises uh, are these 26000 100% good people and 100% of them are going to pay us no uh, actually we have a doubt that 4% still uh, will not pay us okay so what we need to do after deducting irrecoverable debt from the trade receivable, we need to apply the percentage of doubtful debt that is 4%. Now at the end of the year, we doubt that 1040 worth of customers will not pay us. Okay. So end of the year, we have a provision for doubtful debt of 1040. Now what happens at the start of the year, as you can see, we already have a provision of how much? We have a provision of 910 okay so this 910 provision at the start of the year now becomes 1040 at the end of the year now as you can see the provision has been increased from 910 to 1040 the provision has been increased by how much amount provision has increased by 130 okay provision has been increased by 130 so if the provision is increased during the year then therefore it is an expense for the business and if instead the provision has decreased during the year then there it is a need, deemed as an expense okay so what we need to do we need to add up all of the expenses and if we add up all of these expenses and we need to deduct it from this no name figure in order to find the final value if the final value is positive then it is known as profit for the year and if instead the final value is negative then this would be termed as loss for the year okay so in this case it's a profit for the year so this means surya has earned 62270 profit uh, during this year thank you ji